Hello everyone. In today's lecture, we will talk about uh, electrophoretic mobility shift assay, that's uh, IMSA. So IMSA is a very common technique in order to find out protein DNA or protein RNA interactions. For example, if you have a DNA sequence, you have a promoter region of a gene and you want to see which are the transcription factor which binds to this promoter. So in order to know those protein which bind to the promoter, uh, one can perform IMSA. So IMSA is also known as a, a mobility shift assay or a gel shift assay, gel mobility shift assay or band shift assay or gel retardation assay. They are same thing. It's a very common affinity electrophoresis technique that is used to study protein and nucleic acid interactions. And uh, this procedure can determine if a protein or mixture of protein is capable of binding to a given DNA or RNA sequence or not. We know that there are many proteins which interact with nucleic acids. For example, uh, transcription factor. Transcription factors, they bind to the DNA at a specific sequence. So in order to know uh, which are the transcription factor binding to a DNA sequence, IMSA can be performed. So in IMSA, solution of protein and nucleic acid, there's a, there's a combined together. So the protein and nucleic acid together form a complex of high molecular weight. As a result, when you run electrophoresis in native condition, native condition means non denaturing conditions, the protein and the nucleic acid complex migrate more slowly in comparison to the nucleic, nucleic acid alone. And that's how uh, in IMSA is also known as gel retardation assay where because the complex formation uh, the high molecular weight complex formation between protein and nucleic acid that moves slowly in electrophoresis. There are four steps of IMSA. In first step cell or nuclear extract protein extract from the nucleus is made. For example this is protein extract from the nucleus and then you have a DNA probe, a DNA sequence or RNA sequence uh, for what you are looking for partners in the cytosolic extract, this one. And this DNA probe is uh, labeled, generally it's labeled by ra radioactivity. So you have radioactivity labeled probe when you run electrophoresis and do autoradiography, you will see that this is a probe. The molecular weight of probe is coming here, very low molecular weight alone. Now this DNA probe is added into the protein extract and after addition this uh, DNA probe will form complex with the protein uh, for example if you are using transcription factor here so transcription, the uh, specific transcription factor would bind to the DNA probe so it form a protein probe complex which is of high molecular weight and in the electrophoresis when you, you run it you will see because of high molecular weight and you do autoradiography, you will see the probe is shifted. The molecular weight of probe is become high. So it's not molecular weight of probe, basically probe is shifted because probe is binding to the protein. And the entire protein and probe complex is of high molecular weight. That's why this band is shifted here. So this is uh, complex of uh, protein and probe. So if you if you find this kind of shifting, it means there is some protein in the complex, uh, protein in this ex cell extract which is binding to the probe. Now this protein also can be identified using protein identification methods. And sometimes when uh, uh, the shift is not remarkable, in order to confirm that antibodies are also added, antibody against the protein protein which may be binding to the probe. So when you add antibody, anti-protein antibody here, it the complex molecular weight become much high. So there is a further shift and this further shift is called super shift. Super shift means uh, antibodies uh, binding to the protein and uh, DNA complex which is yielding very high molecular weight complex here. And you remember here this band, these bands are correspond to only probe because you have labeled only DNA sequence for example. So the DNA probe is shifting. You are not measuring, I mean you are not detecting here protein or antibody. You are only detecting probe. So that's how the probe is being shifted to the, uh, to the high molecular weight complex 
that simply means it is binding it is binding to something and that's why the molecular video complex is becoming high and that's how it's retarding the movement uh, of the complex in gel in native conditions being retarded so there are four steps first nuclear extract protein extract is made then it's allowed to bind to the probe then electrophoresis in known denaturing condition is performed uh, here you don't denature because if you use denaturing condition like in SDS page the interaction between probe and protein will be disrupted and you will not see any shift so that's why it's important to use known denaturing conditions here in electrophoresis and in the fourth step the probe is detected by autoradiography so you can see the movement of the probe from low molecular weight to high molecular weight when you add uh, protein which bind to the probe or further you add antibodies in super shift the another example for, uh, for here you want to find out the nf kappa b nf kappa b is a transcription factor and you want to see whether uh, this is being expressed in a cell or not so in that case a nuclear extract of a normal cell control cell is taken and uh, in control cell you will see nf kappa b should be coming band should have been coming here but there is no band here you can only detect the free probe so here you have used a probe a dna sequence which is specific for nf kappa b to bind so in a control cell you see free probe at low molecular weight and when you add probe into a activated cell any activated cell where nf kappa b transcription factor would be present would be expressing you will see that the probe band is shifted here it's become high molecular weight that simply means uh, the probe is uh, complexing it's forming complex with the nf kappa b and that's only possible if nf kappa b is being present in the extract or not so that that's how you can confirm whether some transcription factors are being present in a cell or not you just need to have the probe which bind to the transcription factor and using IMSA uh, you can find out the presence or absence of given transcription factor in the cell in given conditions. Applications IMSA is used to detect DNA binding or even RNA binding proteins and factors. Analysis of DNA sequence for example promoter enhancer regions or their potential to bind specifically to protein or nuclear extract that can be find out by IMSA. You also can do analysis of cellular extract for the presence of certain DNA binding protein. If you want to see that uh, some DNA binding protein are present or not in a cell extract, you can perform IMSA. You can determine stoichiometry of interaction. Stoichiometry of interactions means the uh, relative molar ratio of uh, DNA binding protein and the DNA probe itself whether there is a one probe is binding to two molecular protein or vice versa so that is stoichiometry also can be found out for that you need to know the amount of protein present in the experiment and the precise amount of probe if you have stoichiometry can be determined using IMSA then uh, determination of concentration of protein if you know the amount of probe and stoichiometry both the how much protein is present in the sample DNA binding protein present in the sample that also can be found out and uh, if you have uh, available the concentration of protein stoichiometry and uh, the amount of uh, probe then determination of affinity constant the affinity the quantitation the quantitative value of the affinity uh, between DNA and the protein or the binding constant that also can be determined using IMSA.